Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week back on the Rockstar, we are going to finish wiring up the pedal and then we're going to start having a look at some radiator pipes. All right guys, welcome back. And for those of you who were watching last week will have seen that I spent a lot of time uh, lying down under the dash, uh, fitting the uh, original Audi V8 pedal to the Rockster. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and uh, please think about subscribing and liking the video because it does actually make a difference. All right, um, as with last week, you saw that I changed the pedal over and put the Audi pedal in. There were lots of comments going, why didn't you actually use a, um, a just go and source a later box to pedal that was actually a fly-by-wire pedal, which potentially would have been uh, quite a bit easier. Um, the main reason was that uh, I'd always sort of, I'd always had it in my head that I was gonna be putting that pedal in the car because originally, obviously I was gonna keep the ECU. So um, I was just, didn't go back and think of it to change it when I was uh, changing over ECUs. I could have gone, got the other pedal, but uh, as it is, it was it was there, it's free. I don't have to go and buy anything. It just took me a little bit of uh, uh, fabricating to put it in there, so I'm happy enough with that how it is. So the first thing we gotta do this week is to get the uh, wires from the pedal back to the ECU. All right, so uh, my first job today is to wire this pedal up to the ECU in the back. And uh, I've spent a bit of time today trying to track down wiring diagrams. It was actually harder than I thought, even though this pedal is used in, in Golfs and Audis and a bunch of other German cars um, for uh, quite a while, it was still hard to find definitive um, a wiring diagram, but I think I've got it now. So. Um, Basically, there's six wires coming out of this unit. Basically, there is two sensors in the pedal for redundancy. Uh, same in the, uh, the other end and the throttle bodies. There's uh, two groups of three wires. So um, there's two five volt in, two sensor grounds, and then two signal wires. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run some new wires through to the ECU, and that's where I've got this stuff. Um, this is a nice, cheap, uh, way to get some decent automotive wiring is trailer wire. So this is a, this is a seven core trailer wire. I need six of them, but I'm not gonna pull it out. It's nicely insulated. Um, so perfect to run a new wire through the cabin all the way up to the back. I'll wire it up and then put a plug on the other end before I wire it into the ECU. So let's start wiring. All right, so back in here with the organized chaos in the back of the Rockster. Uh, I've run my cable through underneath all the trim panels and um, I now have connected up to this uh, six-way Deutsch connector. So um, it's a nice, good seal and that is now connected up to my ECU wiring. That's another job marked off the list. So um, I think that's enough wiring for now and I might get the car back up in the air and we'll have another look at these radiator pipes. All right, so the issue that I've been dealing with this whole time with these radiator pipes is this corner here. So you can see this is a subframe I built for the uh, engine to hold the engine in. And this is the, uh, the center of the car here. And this is where the two radiator uh, factory Boxster radiator pickup hoses come out. And I need to basically bring two hoses and wrap them around here and around here and then go up to the engine. So they've both got to fit through this small space and the fact is there's, that it's just, it's just too tight. I can't really stack them because then they start sitting down too low under the car. There's just not enough room. So 
in the theme of my usual, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing twice, or in this case, three or four times, I'm going to modify my subframe again. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is uh, these center bars here, I want to cut them off and I want to bring it back in at more of an angle. So instead of joining up here, it joins up just over here. That'll give me plenty of space to run the two radiator pipes through. Uh, I'm gonna do custom aluminum pipes instead of all those silicon bends as well, so that uh, it's got a nice clean run. This is, this is uh, the same internal diameter, but obviously uh, slimmer. So it's just going to fit much nicer up in here. So that's my next job is to start cutting and uh, reshaping and rewelding and rejoining this subframe up to give me a bit more space. All right, that uh, was a bunch of work to uh, rebuild this subframe. Um, it doesn't look a lot different, but now before we could just fit one of these tubes through, now there's, there's tons of space to be able to fit my radiator tubes through and, uh, and connect up my radiator. So now it's time to uh, start playing with some aluminium. All right, so you saw me previously make up uh, the, the whole run of radiator piping with a whole bunch of silicon bends uh, that looked a, a bit like a dog's breakfast. And I thought it was time to tidy that up. Uh, it will give me more space tucking it up under because obviously uh, the straight aluminum tube is um, smaller out of diameter than the silicon, uh, the silicon hose, but also it's just gonna be much neater and tidier. So uh, I went and got myself a bunch of these donuts, but the only issue is, is that they are in halves. Often you get them and they're welded together already. In this case, they are not. So first thing I need to do is uh, tidy these all up and weld them into a solid donut. I am uh, enjoying practicing welding more aluminium. Um, again, my welds aren't perfect, but they're getting better. You can sort of see there's patches where I've started and stopped and some bits I was too hot and uh, others I was cooler. So, you know, it's not perfect, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm happy enough. It's gonna do the job. It's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's definitely not a show car we're building. We've got these welded up. Now it's time to start um, cutting and pasting together the radiator pipes and uh, make them all fit the car.
All right, so that was about a day of work, a solid day, but you can see here that I finally got my pipes in all connected up. It's a tight fit, but we actually have uh, radiator pipes that are all in. Now, um, welding up these tight little corners, particularly like this one here, uh, some of the welds are pretty ugly. Uh, because I had to do a tight little bend here and then a tight little bend. And unlike uh, if I was TIG welding that to steel, these thin little bits in uh, aluminium, the whole thing heats up and they it just sort of melts away. And aluminium transmits heat so much better than steel that, uh, yeah, welding up these tight little corners was a real pain. But it's all in and I think that is going to do the job. So now I'm going to pull them all out again and uh, pressure test them before we uh, put some hose clamps on and leave them in there for good. All right, so I've set this all up now with uh, a radiator testing kit I have. I don't have a very good seal on this end. This is uh, supposed to be a screw cap. It just sort of happens to fit into this silicon bend reasonably well, but it's got a little hand pump and a pressure gauge. Because this is not sealing very well, it's obviously uh, it's leaking a bit. And I just used a, a milk cap to block up one end here and, uh, um, a little three eighths ratch socket bit thing that I've got just just to sort of see how see if there are any leaks and um, already we can see and you can see I found a leak. Let's try that again. And that is bubble free. One down, one to go. We got a bleeder. Well, we have our pipes, they're all installed, they're all clamped up, and I am very happy. Uh, it's a very tight fit, but uh, nothing I'm not used to. And I think that is um, everything in this car connected. All right, well that is now everything on the rocks to connect it up. So we've got all of the systems in place, everything is ready to try and fire it up, which is what we're going to try and do next week. I don't know how that's going to go, but uh, we'll see when we get there. Uh, in any case, hopefully you're enjoying this project along with me, and if you are, do all the usual things, like and subscribe, and uh, join us on Patreon, it does help us out, and uh, you get to watch the videos ad-free a day early. And uh, make sure, if you need to buy parts for any of your Porsches, you compare prices at Porsche Parts, so blah, 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 Porsche Parts. Porsche parts by Jeff.com. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right, see you guys.